Shippert, and I work at Excellus Viz in Boulder. And I work mainly in the tech support department. I sometimes do training and other things as well. And I'm going to be talking today about, um, about radiometric calibration and atmospheric correction briefly. And uh, the reason I decided to talk about this one is that in tech support, we get a, um, a lot of uh, queries from people who are doing atmospheric correction. And then when you start talking to them a little bit more, um, you realize that maybe they didn't even need to do it or they don't really understand why they're doing it. And so I thought I'd do a little spiel to talk about why we do it and when it's useful and when it's not really even necessary. So basically, um, people sometimes get confused about um, where their data is in the process of getting corrected. And usually when you get data from the data provider, it st starts out as raw data, which comes with the pixel values uh, being what we call digital numbers or DNs. So that's just a way of saying it's not calibrated, it's not in any kind of physically meaningful unit. So data in that state includes the effects of the light source that was used to um, to illuminate the surface, it includes effects of the sensor, it includes effects of the atmosphere, and it includes the effects of the surface material. So um, we usually, if we're going to be doing any kind of quantitative analysis, want to correct some of those things out. And so we do what's uh, called first uh, a calibration. And that takes the pixel values from their raw DN numbers to uh, physically meaningful units of radiance. And the typical, probably the most common units for radiance is watts per meter squared per stair radium per nanometer. So once you have your data in radiance, and there's a little tool in Envy that can do this for you, um, it still has the effects of the light source, it has the effects of the atmosphere, and it also has the effects of the surface material. Now typically, we're really only interested in the surface material part of this. So there's another step, which is the atmospheric correction. And once you've performed the atmospheric correction on the data that's already been calibrated to radiance, you remove the, the effects of the light source and the atmosphere, and you end up with information just about the surface material. And that's what people generally want to have. Now, if you have data that is your raw data that has all of these effects in it, and all you want to do is you know, get a picture of your area, then you're fine with the raw data. I mean, you can see the features in there usually. Um, and there's no particular reason to go through all of these steps, which can be a little complicated sometimes, to get it to reflectance pixels. But if you're going to do some kind of quantitative analysis where you're going to compare your, the spectra in your image to spectra in some other image, um, or if you're going to compare it to ground spectra, or if you're going to do some kind of quantitative analysis where you want to know something like, well, how much of my pixel is filled with this material? That's when you need to do the correction all the way to reflectance. So I wanted to just go through this again in, a, in another way with pictures, because sometimes that helps a little bit more. So I got my little picture here of this is the surface that's in the image that we're looking at. And the light source, usually with optical imagery, all, pretty much always with optical imagery, is the sun. So the sun shines down on our surface. And some portion of that light gets reflected back up to our sensor which is what that box is meant to represent. And um, there are some complications here. Um, so the first one is that you know there's an atmosphere. So there's all kinds of gases in there, and aerosols and things like that. And so um, one thing that can happen is the light that's coming down from the sun that normally would hit the surface if there wasn't an atmosphere, you know, some of that can hit a particle in the atmosphere and be scattered away, so we lose some of the signal. Also, uh, you know, after it's been reflected from the surface on its way up to the sensor, it can hit a particle and be scattered. Or it could be absorbed by the gases in the atmosphere. And likewise, you can have, you know, some particles in the atmosphere that the sun hits and then it shines them into the sensor so it looks like it's coming from the surface, but it actually didn't even interact with the surface, so it has nothing to do with it. So these are all the kinds of things that we're trying to correct out when we do uh, correction to reflectance and atmospheric correction. And if we just were to look at the pixel values, so say we look at the other thing we're doing is we're kind of correct, we're correcting out the effects of the spectrum of the sun itself. So the sun is not just equally strong at all wavelengths. If we're going to be looking at spectra um, in our image, so say we have a 
we're just going to measure the spectra of the sun, so the wavelengths are on the x-axis, and irradiance of the sun is on the y-axis. The solar curve looks something like this, you know, where that's sort of visible green, maybe visible light. Um, and so this gets superimposed on any signal we have from the materials that we're trying to look at that are on the surface. And we want to correct that out, too. Um, so what ends up happening is, so say we, we're looking at a little piece of vegetation here. Initially, our spectrum from that vegetation is going to have all of the effects of the solar curve and also the effects of whatever gases are in the atmosphere absorbing things. So, so maybe that's the solar curve after the sunlight has gone through the atmosphere, you know, so all those a bunch of gases that are absorbing it, absorbing it at different wavelengths. Um, and then those get superimposed with the spectrum of the actual material here. So say that we had, you know, if the thing that we're looking at is vegetation, it might actually have a reflectance spectrum that looks something like that. But considering that it, it, the light source is the sun and it went through an atmosphere that absorbs different things, the actual spectrum can end up looking something like this. So what we're trying to do is go from this, which is the raw data, and remove the effects of the light source, remove the effects of the atmosphere, and get to this, which is what the surface material itself would be telling us. So that's pretty much the end of what I have to say today. Um, and you can find um, more information. Uh, there's a, another blog post that I wrote that does all this in words. That's at our Imagery Speak blog on our website. Thanks.